Hi, Alan Stratton from Aswood Turns. Just finished making that Sputnik sea urchin ornament from the juniper from the Cascade Wood Turners group. I still got another piece. Have another sea urchin shell. Let's see if we can change it up just a little bit. Maybe refine a few things. Do a little bit better. Cascade Wood Turners issued a challenge. Make something from a juniper blank that they provided. I made one Sputnik sea urchin ornament with about one half of the blank. Now with the leftover juniper blank from Cascade Wood Turners chapter, I decided to make a second Sputnik sea urchin ornament. Again, not a hanging ornament like Rex Burningham or Kurt Herzog, but a pedestal mounted ornament like Sally Alt. With a second turning in quick succession, I hope to refine both the turning and my techniques. I still like the videos from Cindy Drozda showing her finials. This blank is a little longer than the first one. I'm thinking that a slightly taller finial would also look nice. This finial is again based on what I saw in Cindy's video. This time I glued the blank directly to, the scrap, to a scrap block with yellow glue and it dried it overnight. It held without question. No need for a tenon unless I were to get really rough. That saved quite a bit of time fitting the tenon. I used the same waste blank that I had from the first one but mounted to my chuck. I roughed it out with a spindle gouge. No need for finesse here, but I still wish I had a large spindle roughing gouge. The most time was spent gradually refining the spindle diameter to accept the sea urchin. With only one remaining piece of wood, I did not want to overshoot the diameter or the spacing. So I did a lot of stopping and starting of the lathe to test the fit. Time for a better set of calipers. Yep, yeah, they're on my Christmas list. Sea urchin shells are very fragile. During the test fitting, I pressed it just a little too hard and split. It appears that every line that you see on the shell is a potential fracture point. When it cracked, I was afraid I'd have to start over with another shell. The shell looked too thin to apply CA glue to the broken edges. However, it turned out that I only needed to position the pieces correctly and then apply medium CA glue to the inside of the shell over the crack. This bridged the crack and it's holding fine. I had spread one layer of white glue on the inside of the shell, but it had only been an hour or so drying when I pushed it a little too hard. Next time I'm applying three layers of white glue and letting it dry at least a day before turning. I want the shells as tough as I can get them. When the shells arrive, the top and the bottom holes are rough. I was able to use my tapered dowel from the last time to sand the top smaller hole, but it wouldn't work for the bottom hole. Then I realized that I was actually making a small taper out of larger turning, so I tapered the very end of the spindle on which to sand the large hole. I tried to apply some self-adhesive sandpaper to the taper, but it would not hold. Finally, I overlapped the sandpaper. With a knife, I cut through the two layers, then applied a little CA glue to the joint of the paper to hold it down and together. This was sufficient to sand the larger sea urchin hole. In retrospect, I should have sharpened my sh small quarter-inch gou spindle gouge a little more. This would have lessened the pressure on the finial and lessened the deviation that I observed. Last time I used a diamond stone to dress the gouge. I didn't do as much sharpening this time and noticed the difference. I should do better. I still find it difficult to handle a gouge with only my right hand and steady the spindle with my left hand. Guess I need more practice with small sp spindles and finials. I used a half inch skew just a little to refine the V grooves. Once I had the shell placed for both the top and the bottom, the rest went very quickly. At least for me, the greatest care was the fitting. Everything else went much more quickly. Finials at that point were a piece of cake. The top portion of the finial was very similar to the first one, just a little taller. I added a, another small section below it to round out the top finial. I kept the bottom finial and pedestal at about the same height. Of course the, the shell is slightly smaller size which changed things a little bit also. I carefully sanded the finial with 220 and 400 grit sandpaper being very careful with the points and edges. I sanded and finished the top finial first with a shellac based friction polish before completing the bottom pedestal finial. After parting it off from the waste block I sanded the bottom with, sand, with a sanding pad chucked into the drill press then used a Dremel etcher to sign the bottom before sanding again with 400 grit sandpaper and applying the finish. Now comparing the two ornaments. 
I like the simplicity of the base of the second ornament. The first base is just a little bit too busy. That and on the first one I felt that I needed a half bead here below the sea urchin. And that also implied that I needed to sand the bottom of the shell to remove the points just around the hole. But I didn't want to do that either. So that left just a little gap between the half bead and the shell itself. The second one I think was more successful in that I kept the, the spindle to the diameter of the hole until it exited the hole. Then it drops directly into a cove. And I think that worked out more successful. Perhaps the bottom could be refined just a little bit for more interest, but definitely not as busy as the first one turned out to be. In the second ornament, I wanted to make it a little bit taller, and yes it is. The top portions of the finials are very similar from what Cindy called the onion to the very top in both cases, and I like that flow. However, the space between the onion and the shell I think could be done better. The first one's not bad, but the second one to me is, is not that attractive and, and could be done better. I think that the next time I would consider making it a little bit shorter, be about the average of the two, but extend this taper between the onion and the narrow point of the diameter and make this reach just a little bit higher in a tapering flow. But as is, both are keepers. I like them. <laughs>